Uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Um, it's probably uh, of no surprise to anyone on this call uh, that health care costs are, um, are growing at a phenomenal rate uh, in this country. Uh, recent projections, if you look at the bar graph uh, to the right, um, is that the annual premiums for employee-sponsored family health coverage um, is, is expected to go from $12,000 a year uh, currently to um, a half again that much uh, in the next five years. Um, and uh, there's a bar chart, there's a pie chart on the upper left-hand corner that shows you um, uh, how the uh, costs are, uh, are are actually divided, uh, and what the what the what the expenditures actually turn out to be. At the same time, we're spending more and more. Uh, the quality of care is actually not very good in this country, and furthermore, it's not improving. Uh, it's not my intention to read each one of these bullets. So you can take a look at them. Um, uh, it's the case that um, even though we're spending a lot more on health care in this country, we're not actually um, uh, doing so well. Uh, there are many examples in which we're, um, um, uh, we're very far down the list. If you look at infant mortality rate, for example, seven deaths per thousand of live births compared to 2.7 in the top three countries uh, in the world, even though our expenditures far exceed um, uh, other countries. So uh, that's, that's uh, beginning to identify the problem. Here's another aspect of the problem. There's paper everywhere. Uh, this, is a particularly, uh, this is particularly dramatic because of the uh, 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 amount of paper. I don't actually know of any other industry that is so paper bound uh, as, the, um, as the healthcare industry uh, turns out to be. Um, and at the same time, we have all this information uh, sitting dormant uh, in, these, uh, in these files. One of the problems in the industry is we don't have the right kind of information, the right kind of data about the processes uh, that are going on in healthcare to be able to, to make changes. We'll talk more about that as we go along. Lots of paper, even though we've got computers everywhere. Uh, here are just a few examples. If you walk into uh, uh, most any uh, healthcare facility uh, in the in the country these days. You look around and you see computer after computer after computer. Sometimes they're connected together. Sometimes they're not. More often that they're they're not completely connected. Uh, and uh, very often uh, it's the case that not all of them are connected. Um, again, we'll talk more later. Uh, data is everywhere, um, and it's also in every imagined format. Uh, and that uh, when we talk about computers these days, it's important to talk about. Uh, telephones and cameras uh, and PDAs uh, and laptops uh, and workstations and servers, um, uh, all sorts of data is available, uh, yet um, uh, it's not always available in the right form and in the right um, way for people to actually utilize that information. Integration is occasionally observed. Uh, this happens to be uh, intentionally a picture of a uh, of a robot at work filling a, uh, a prescription, uh, and it's uh, doing actually an amazing job of reducing the number of errors in uh, filling uh, prescriptions in a uh, in a large uh, medical center. So one does uh, d d discover occasionally that you've got nice integrated systems that really are making a difference and uh, having an impact uh, on the uh, on the on the quality of care uh, within um, uh, within the industry. Nevertheless, it's the case that the healthcare industry is one of the last major industries to adopt modern IT systems. Uh, it's astonishing to me that it's behind the taxi industry, the manufacturing businesses, fast food restaurants, national retail chains, and, uh, and the trucking industry, to name just a few. Um, uh, uh, it is quite amazing. Uh, at the same time, many uh, excellent healthcare solutions exist. Uh, but the adoption rate uh, for those solutions uh, is surprisingly low, even though it is now growing. I think these numbers are actually quite optimistic numbers, that 10% of the general practitioners uh, in this country work in fully automated offices. The key word there is fully. Um, uh, almost all practitioner, practitioners work in an office with some level of automation, uh, but fully automated is a, is a different story, and without paper records is a different story. 20% uh, uh, of the large uh, medical centers in the country uh, have comprehensive IT systems, but that 
does not mean that 20% of the medical centers are completely paperless. Uh, rather rare to find uh, uh, actually uh, paper environments. For instance, I've never seen one. Um, uh, there, there are several facilities and, and healthcare institutions in the country that are approximating that, but the difference between most and all is, is a big difference. Uh, data sharing, um, by contrast, is certainly beginning to happen, um, and it's beginning in some cases by simply sharing of images or PDF files, essentially like automated fax machines, um, uh, instead of what you really would like to have, which is structured computable data that could be shared uh, across organizational uh, boundaries to provide better uh, care for, uh, for patients. There's also a fear of new uh, application development, um, uh, and for good reason, because the failure rate of application development projects industry-wide has been um, extraordinarily high. Uh, the result is that uh, prudent managers uh, uh, have simply made a, a, a decision that they will uh, buy solutions rather than build solutions because they think the, the probability of failure of the build approach uh, uh, is simply uh, is simply too high. But since you know, any reasonable sized medical center actually needs uh, a peck of new applications. That's a quantity measure. Um, uh, how do you go about integrating them? How do you uh, integrate them with the data? How do you cope with the variety of technologies that you end up acquiring uh, uh, through this acquisition? Uh, how do you achieve a common look and feel, for example? How do you create common uh, uh, terminology across these projects, uh, across these products? Um, it's actually quite hard to do. Um, and where do you go to get an enterprise architecture within which you can acquire all the all the components, applications, and systems uh, with the level of uh, integration that you would uh, that you'd like to have? Uh, easy to state these problems, harder to be able to, to uh, accomplish them. Well, suppose you had uh, an itty bitty IT department that could actually deliver results. Wouldn't this be remarkable? Um, uh, one of the things that you could imagine is uh, having an itty bitty IT department that could do itty bitty projects in really short development cycles with really small teams, which means low expense, uh, delivering exceptional quality uh, uh, according to expectations. Um, um, and one of the secrets to this is sort of figuring out uh, what you can build in a short period of time uh, and, and make a determination after that time, did you actually get what you were expecting? And then furthermore, uh, is what's being built uh, of sufficient quality? Um, uh, how many errors are found after handoff, uh, for example? Uh, it's certainly been surprising to me, who is a, a relative newcomer to the healthcare industry, but not at all a newcomer to the software industry, uh, that the, the quality assurance measures in place uh, in this industry are not uh, sufficient, in my opinion, um, uh, to, to um, accomplish the uh, results that they need to accomplish. So uh, what, what would happen if you had this itty-bitty IT department that would start their, their week by having a stand-up meeting and making a determination of exactly what they intend to build, test, and document by the end of the week? Um, uh, what they might need as input is some very small, simple description of what, uh, what needs to be developed. Uh, some people in the Agile community would call this a story card. Uh, others might use screen designs with uh, defined functionality, and some might have a well-defined uh, design process and design tools uh, with detailed specifications for a particular job, a class, or set of classes that need to be built in the course of the week. But the key is that there is a very uh, well-defined, in some fashion, uh, amount of work that needs to be accomplished, and the question is how, how well can the itty-bitty development uh, Department actually um, uh, accomplish that result uh, in the um, in the available time period. Then on Friday afternoon, you have a detailed meeting to assess the current status. Um, the key is that everybody.